that Ahab began his reign. And when you come to 30, the Bible starts talking about the wickedness and the atrocities that Ahab committed. So the Bible says that Ahab did wicked things in the sight of God. He worshipped Baal. He did all kinds of things. He forgot about the God that, 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 that you know, his forefather had served and went after Baal. Did all kinds of things. And I believe strongly that his, his activities, you know, as a matter of fact, in 33, the Bible says that he provoked God to anger. Provoked God to anger. So you discover that because he provoked God to anger, God had no choice than to decree a thing. And that is why he had to use Elijah to decree that there will be no rain. Not caring about the consequence. Because you see, when you are so wicked and you don't seek God, God must come in to let you know that it's more important. And God says that, look, the most essential thing that we need as human beings is rain. Hallelujah. It's rain. So God says that I am going to deprive the land of the essential things that you will need. You see? And I'll be talking about it very soon. Rain is very important. Extremely important in everything we do. Water is important. So if you are denied water or rain, you are in trouble. And so for three and a half years, there was no rain until the same Elijah shows up in verse 18 and then start talking about the fact that the land is contaminated. There's so much, you know, bail that people were serving and so he, they needed to get rid of these people on the land. So he arranged a contest. Ultimately, he defeats the prophets of Baal and, and slew them. And then, and then when the fire of God came down to consume the sacrifice that Elijah prepared, the Bible says in, in, the, 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 in 18 verse, I think 39, the Bible says that then the people said, the Lord is God, the Lord is God, the Lord is God. So at that point, the people recognize that there is only one God because Elijah had told them that you should choose. If you want to serve God, serve God. If you want to serve Baal, serve Baal. Don't be in between. The people never answered him until they saw the fire of God come down and they declared that the Lord is God. They slew the people. And watch this. It was after they slew the prophet of Baal, changed their hearts, then there was rain. The next verse, the Bible says, then there was rain. There was a sign of rain. So Elijah said, there is a sound of rain, and subsequently there was what? An abundance of rain. So you see, in every land, when the people forsake God, God denies them of rain until they turn their hearts. So once the people change their heart and they, they decide to go back to God, then God brings rain. So rain is important. Now, what we are seeing here it's very similar to what you find in the book of Zechariah chapter 10, verse 1. And I am staying there throughout. Just the verse 1. So the Bible says that once upon a time, the nation Israel had been divided into two. You had ten tribes coming together as one. And you had two tribes coming together as one. And the two tribes coming together as one was, was called Judah. And God used the prophet Zechariah, who is one of the minor prophets. And when we talk about minor prophets, of course, there is the major prophets and there is the minor prophet. Now, the major prophets and the minor prophets, one will say, ah, but why, why do you have major prophet and a minor prophet? There, there isn't, there, it's not as if one is more important than the other. It's just that when you say the major prophet, the major prophet wrote more than the minor prophet. So, Zachariah is one of the, of, of the 12 minor prophets. And the Bible says that God had to use Zachariah to speak into the life of Judah. To let them know that, listen, something is wrong. Something so. So, God says, Zachariah, I am sending you to speak into the life of my people. That all is nowhere. That is because they had refused to build a temple. Are you with me? Just flow with me. I am building, I am building something. So, 
Zachariah speaks into the life of Judah to say that something is wrong. All is nowhere. But watch this, you see. Unlike Elijah, whose prophecy was quite scary, Zachariah shows up and when God told Zachariah to speak into the lives of the people, instead of looking into their past to condemn them, Zachariah rather looked into the future to encourage them. Looked into the future to encourage them. Hallelujah. Listen, it is not every time that prophecies must scare us. There are times that prophecies must come to encourage us to say, our God is still in the miracle working business. Our God changes not. It doesn't matter what has happened to us in the past. It doesn't matter the family you are from. It doesn't matter what, what your environment. It doesn't matter who you are. There is still hope for you. There is still hope for you. Because it is the same God. So whether somebody has risen up wanting to kill you, that is not important. Or whether you did something years ago, that is not important. What is most important is that as of today, the God that we know is the same yesterday, he's the same today, he will be the same tomorrow. So if he did it before, he can do it. So Zachariah's prophecy actually came to encourage the people to say that, look, there is hope for your tomorrow. All hope is not lost. You don't have to worry that this God that is able to do miracles can do miracles. This God that is able to make things happen can still make things happen. Believe in this God. Trust in him. Hallelujah. So Zachariah says, look, I have come to do that. And the truth is that this that is what I have come to do. I have not come to scare you. I have not come to discourage you. But I have come to encourage you to let you know that God is able. Oh, somebody didn't hear me. God is able. He's able. He changes not. He doesn't forsake. He doesn't abandon. He is with us and he will continue to be with us. He will continue to be with us. Hallelujah. He will continue to be with us. So believe in him. Trust in him. Honor him. Exhort him. Be with him. Don't give up. Don't give up. I don't know what you must have been told from other areas or what you have received that is negative. But this night, I came with a good news. I came with a good news for you. And the good news is that your God is able. Your God is able. He's able. So Zachariah comes to them and says, well, I know that all is not well, but there is a way out. There is a way out. And the way out is this. Zechariah chapter 1, chapter 10, the verse, the, the verse um, 1. The first, what did he say? He said, Acts of what? Acts ye of the Lord. So, Acts ye of the Lord. So Zagaria says, I, I, I have come to let you know that if you ask of the Lord, the Lord will answer. If you ask of the Lord, the Lord will deliver. If you ask of the Lord, the Lord will honor. Because we know that he watches over his word to perform. But watch this. He says, ask of the Lord, not silver, not gold, not riches, not the wealth of this world, but ask from God what? Rain. Rain. And, and you ask. We are not told whether the land was barren, that whether the land was, uh, had drought. We are not told whether there, there hasn't been rain on the land. But Zachariah says that acts of God rain. Essential. You see, there is a sharp similarities between what is happening here and like I told you, what is happening in 1 Kings. It is just that in the case of 1 Kings, Ahab 
told the, uh, sorry, the, uh, Elijah told the people about physical rain. But in this instance, Zachariah says, I am not asking you to ask for physical rain, but I am asking you to ask for rain from heaven. Spiritual rain. What does rain signify? Rain signifies the power of God. Rain signifies the presence of God. Rain signifies the move of God. So Zachariah says, well, unlike the days of Ahab and Elijah, they asked for physical rain. In your case, I am asking you to ask for rain, but I am asking you to ask for rain that is more important than the physical rain that I can think of. Because the land had not seen a move and the power of God. So Zechariah said, listen, the truth is that when we go before God, what do we ask for? There are things that we must ask for and there are things that we must not ask for. The most important thing that you, everybody must learn to have is the power and the presence of God. You see, we make the mistake every time we go before God, we ask for riches, we ask for the glories of this world, we ask for the honors of this world, we ask for position, we ask for power. But Zachariah says, look, those things are the secondary things that you need. Can anybody survive without water for six months? Can anybody survive without... Um, you can survive even without food for, I don't know, the biologist, for a while. 40 days. You can survive without for 40 days. But can you survive without water for 40 days? Four days. So you can survive without water for, without water for just four days. But without food, you can do it for 40 days. And a lot of the things we ask for ultimately translate into food. They translate to food. So we are busy asking for more or less indirectly food, the things that are like food from God. But you see, the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. And all these things shall be added. So there are things that you must seek first. Oh, I came to tell somebody, seek the power and the presence of God in your life. What you need is not, is not, is not a husband. What you need is not a wife. What you need is not a job. What you need is not a, a business. But what you need is the power and the presence and the glory of God upon your life. That is what you need. Because you see, mama, when you ask for the power and the presence and the glory, certain things are automatic. Favor is one of them. Favor is one of them. So when the glory of God is upon you, people rush to do you favor. You see? So instead of asking for the riches and honor, and you are struggling, you are not getting, ask for certain things so that when you are coming, you come into the glory, it, the glory attracts people automatically into your life, and when the people come into your life, they must do you good. Let's get it right. Let, that, that is why David said in Psalm 51, I think verse 11, he says, cast me not away from your presence. He says, Take not your Holy Spirit from me. Because David recognized that he needed the presence of God more than anything in his life. Listen, you cannot do anything without the power and the presence of God. There are people who deceive themselves daily saying that, oh, we have come this far by our own strength and by our own power. They will tell you, as for this God, we don't need him and all that and all that. Oh, the Bible says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Listen, maybe if they tasted it, they will see that God is good. A lot of us, before we came into Christ, sometimes you used to think that, look, you are enjoying good life, enjoying a, a wonderful life. But compare your life now to when you are not in Christ, which is better? No, which is better? I'm telling you, at least the fact that you have eternal life and your joy overflows gives you the confidence. Even when you have not eaten, you are, you are well. No, let an unbeliever not have money in his pocket. Let somebody who doesn't know Christ not have a job. See how hysterical they become. See how 
unstable they become. See how worried they become. But look at the life of a Christian. You may not have a job, but you are well. You may not have a husband, but you are well. You may not have a child, but you are well. You may not have a business, but you are well. You may not have a place to lay your head, but people see you and they envy you. Why? Because the difference between you and them is that there is a power and there is a glory upon your life. There is a power and a glory. And the power and the glory is what makes the difference. So wise, Saul was busy asking for the position. David says, give me the presence because that is what is most important. Listen, let's learn to ask of God. His power and his presence. Imagine you carry the power and the presence of God. You walk into places like Peter and even your shadow is healing people. Imagine, will you ever go hungry? People will see you and when they are eating, whatever they've got you to, they will stop and they'll bring the food to you and they'll say, man of God, just eat for me. Eat for me. Have you not seen it before? Where, 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 because you are so anointed, mama, somebody will be driving a car and then you'll park the car and say, ah, man of God, take the key. Take the key. You need it more than I do. That is what we are talking about. That is what we are talking about. That when you carry the presence and the power, the other things come automatically. But look at you. Because you are not after the power and the presence. The only thing we are doing is that you are struggling to get the other things. You need connection to get the breakthrough. You need to know somebody because you can, we can get the business. You need to, to wind yourself before a man comes into your life. But I tell you, I tell you, I tell you, if you get it right, the other things are automatic. The other things are automatic. So it says, acts of rain. Did he say rain? Okay. So, go, okay, see. So give me the Zechariah 10, verse 1. And stay there. Don't move. He said, ask me of rain. So, two things. This, ask me of rain. Watch this. Ask me, or it says, ask ye of the Lord rain in the latter, in the time of what? The latter rain. So, he's saying that, ask God for rain, for his presence and his power and his glory. But ask it at the time of the latter rain. Latter rain. Now, as at the time this scripture was written, and I think possibly it's still the same, they used to have two main seasons. The dry season and the rainy season. Okay? Dry season, naturally, things were dry. Everything dry. Hallelujah. So difficult times, dry season. But let's put that aside. Let's talk about the rainy season. There were, even the rainy season, there were three types of rainy season. Or within that, you have three. You had the former rain, you have the winter rain, and you have the latter rain. Hallelujah. So the former rain, the winter rain, and the latter rain. Now, the former rain is the rain that comes immediately after dry season. And the former rain comes to soften the ground. So the former rain creates, it's like, it, it's like the John the Baptist. It paves the way for the major rain to come through. Hallelujah. So the former rain just comes, you know, just to prepare the ground. Because if the ground is too dry... When you have the major rain coming, the, rain, the ground may not be able to absorb. So, you know, it's like, it's like you, you know, it just creates a good environment for the major rain to come through. Hallelujah. So, he's saying that acts of, of rain in the latter rain. Now, I come there. So, the truth is that even when God, in his infinite mercy, 
He's able to first of all give you the formal rain. Now, the formal rain are the little, little things that God drops. Even when you, there are times that you don't even qualify. There are times that it is not even, you are, it is not even, your, you, you don't even deserve it. But God lets you know that he still loves you. That is why some of us, why we were even yet seen as the Bible says, he still what? Loved us. Why? Because he was using the formal rain. His little, little presence was preserving us. Little, little presence was preserving us. The former rain. You know, that one's small. Because sometimes I, was so I asked myself, there were so many things I did that perhaps by now I should have died. But I didn't die. Hallelujah. There were battles that were fought over me that, that the enemy lost. Although as at that time I wasn't in the camp of God. Yet, I, somehow God made me survive. <laughs> former rain. That's the former rain. Hallelujah. So the former rain, God still releases you to let you know he loves you. He appreciates you. Even when you don't go to him to ask for, he will still release it to prepare the ground, knowing that one day you will come to him to ask for rain and he's going to bring a major rain. May God bring you the former rain. The things you have not asked, may God bring it to you. The things that you have not even demanded, may God in his infinite wisdom release it unto you in the name of Jesus. May he prepare the ground for your, for your major rain. Hallelujah. So these are things that God does. And we say, our God is wonderful. Our God is wonderful. The Bible says, before we open our mouth, he knows our heart desire. So even as you are sitting here, God knows your need. You know, there are times that you get things on the platter of God and you ask yourself, ah, but this thing, how did I get it? I don't know about you, but I mean, some of us, we did things also. For, we did things that ideally, maybe we are not supposed to be here. But he preserves us. And then you have the winter rain. The winter rain is major. As for that, when he releases the winter rain, when that, that major season comes, even a lot of the water, the ground is not able to absorb it. Hallelujah. And you remember at times, there are times that God does so much in your life that you begin to wonder why. Because he blesses you beyond measure. You ask for one and he gives you two. And you're asking yourself, why God, why? Why are you blessing me? Have you ever been there before? That the things that you ask, and before you know it, God is doing in multiples. Have you ever been there before? I have been there before. That sometimes you wake up and you don't even know what to pray about. There are sometimes you wake up and you're asking God, God, why are you so good to me? That is the winter rain. That is the winter rain. So he brings the winter rain. His presence, his glory. He comes, that is, that is when his presence and his glory comes in a bare form over your life. Huge. Heavy. And then you talk about the latter rain. The latter rain is very interesting. The latter rain is the rain that comes after the winter rain. And the latter rain is the rain that, you know, the ground holds, and the latter rain is what causes the seed, the things you have planted to even survive and to do well and to, to be harvested and to mature for them to get. To. The, the, the latter rain is what even the ground needs to survive the dry season because there must be some small water. And that is why he's saying that they should ask for God at the rain in the latter rain time. Why? Because in the latter rain time, whatever you get is what you need to pass through this dry season. Listen, when the power and the presence of God comes upon you, sometimes you are walking through places and you are wondering how you are surviving it. Sometimes you are doing this and you are wondering how. That is because there is a power and there is a spirit in you that makes the impossible become possible in your life. There are things you are doing that others may not be doing or may not be able to do, but you are going through because why? Because there is a force behind it. They don't see it. What is when you carry the latter rain mama, what is difficult for others is not difficult for you. What is killing others cannot kill you. What is consuming others cannot consume you. What is frustrating other people cannot frustrate you. Why? Because for you, it's like you have a reservoir. You have a reservoir. So when others are going through dry season and they are worried and they are, they are crying and they are wailing, you are going through dry season as if it's wet season. Listen, may you go through dry season as if it's wet season. Go through dry season as if it's wet season. Nothing bothers you. You, use, you lose your job and you are still happy. <laughs> because you know that your God, Jehovah, 
He's able to provide. He's able to make way where there is no way. So when you carry the latter rain, mama, even when you get to the desert, you will make way. Because that presence is with you. You are asking for that thing that will make you survive every situation. And I am here to tell somebody that may God come upon you in such a way that you will survive every situation. Nothing will kill you. Nothing will consume you. Nothing will frustrate you. Nothing will stop you from doing what you are supposed to do. Let the economy of Ghana be bad. You will survive. You will make it. Let the economy of Ghana be so turbulent. As for you, you will not feel it. I've always said, Pastor Connie made a statement in Borga years ago. So I have never forgotten. He says, God is not an economist. God is not an economist. I love that statement. Listen, your God is not an economist. So when that presence comes upon you, everything you do must prosper. No, it must prosper. It must do well. Because it's not you. The Bible says it takes the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. Hallelujah. Are we getting it? So ask for the presence of God in such a way that that presence will enable you go through dry times as if it is worst time. So he says, acts of rain in the time of the latter rain. In the time of the latter rain. And watch this. It says, the Lord. So it says, the first one is that there is man's request. It says, make a demand upon God. Make a request upon God. Zachariah comes in and says, this is what I think you should do, although your past is not good, but we can delete your past. And let's look into the forward. And look into the forward. This is how I think you should behave for you to survive. You have a part. Ask. Ask this at this time. Then he says, this is how God will respond. He says, the Lord shall make bright clouds. Hold it there. The Lord shall make bright clouds. I didn't know that there are so many types of clouds until I started making some research. Then I understood also why sometimes you enter some clouds, it's as if the aircraft is coming down. That's why I don't like flying. I've told you before. You, Mama, you enter some clouds. And when I was doing this research, I picked some clouds. Oh, there is a cloud called called cumulo, cumulo nimbus, cumulo nimbus cloud. Mama, that is the musbe, and I'll talk about it. So there are different types of clouds, but let me limit it to three. You have the stratus, you have the nimbus, and you have the cumulo, cumulo, cumulo limbus. Cumulo limbus cloud. <laughs> hey! Now, sometimes when, when you are going through the word of God and you can link it to, to reality, it makes life, you know, it makes it very interesting. So the first type of cloud is the stratus. The stratus is the cloud that is very normal. You see out there, sometimes it is very clear, you know, and I think that I was telling my daughter, princess, I think three days ago when we were talking about flying. I said, oh, but daddy, how come that sometimes... Some of this, you enter cloud and nothing is happening. I said, I said, Princess, there are some clouds that when you enter, nothing happens because those clouds have nothing to offer. So that is the stratus cloud. You see, you are, it, is, it is misty, but you enter, the aircraft enters this and nothing happens. And the pilots, they know that as for this cloud, it is just stratus. We will, as a matter of fact, I once had an opportunity of sitting um, at the cockpit of an aircraft one of my former colleagues, used to be one of my branch managers, a resigner went into flying and he flies African world. He's one of their major pilots. So every time he, he, he when he sees me fly, flying his aircraft, then he invites me to the cockpit. So he invited me to the cockpit, we were going to Kumasi. And you know, I begged him, I said, first of all, when I sit in the aircraft, I don't even want to see what is happening. So Mr. Seedu, come, it is nothing. 
Anyway, so he puts me in the cockpit. We're flying to Kumasi. We take off. And that is when I knew that sometimes flying can be interesting. Because as soon as you sit down, the instrument tells you your route. So it tells you whether there's going to be cloud. And I think the, 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 it shows yellow. No, it's, it's green, yellow, and red. Green means that it is, there, there are clouds, but it is nothing. And I want to believe that green means stratus cloud. Yellow means that, you know, but when it is red, don't go there. <laughs> when it's red, don't go there. Hallelujah. So, pilot themselves, they know that as for stratus cloud, it is nothing. Nothing. We can fly through. And we have a lot of stratus cloud Christians in the house. The stratus cloud produces no rain. So when you wake up and you see it, it is there. Sometimes you can see through it and see the blue, blue sky. It produces no rain. We have Christians in the house who are seated here. They are up there. They are Christians and all, but they produce no rain. They carry no presence. Carry no presence. They can't bring down any rain. And the truth is that, like I was telling you, the pilots, they know. They know the cloud they can pass through. So as for stratus, they can pass through at, even using autopilot. And that's why the enemy knows that it can pass through you because as for you, bring down no rain. You bring down no rain. Stratus cloud. Hallelujah. But you see, you have the nimbus cloud. The nimbus cloud, N-I-M-B-U-S, nimbus cloud, the nimbus cloud, it is grayish. That's what sometimes you look at it and say, hey, we are saying you are so better. As for the nimbus cloud, it is thick and it can bring down rain. Hallelujah. So the nimbus cloud can produce rain. But you see, the ultimate, the, fly, the, the aircraft can still go through nimbus cloud. And it is nimbus cloud so that when they are going through the aircraft, as if the aircraft is struggling and is fighting with the cloud. But when it comes to the cumulonimbus kumul, cloud, don't go there. Thank you very much. Cumulonimbus cloud. Don't go there. The pilot themselves, they know that if you try it, the aircraft can scatter. Listen. And the Bible is saying, or Zachariah says, Ask for God, and God will bring you brighter clouds. And do you know the cumulonimbus cumul cloud? It is the thick cloud, the white one, the big one. And most of the time, what they do is that they avoid it. Listen. So he's saying that when you ask for it, God will bring you the cumulonimbus type of cloud. That even the enemy knows that as for this one, don't go there. There is a word in the Bible that says, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. So when you are speaking to God to bring you that rain that carries that cumulonimbus cloud, then the enemy knows that as for this one, it's untouchable because it carries a presence and a glory that has never been seen before. It carries a power. There is a power that comes down that has never been seen before. I came to announce to somebody this night that when you go to God and ask for his presence and his power, may he show you a brighter cloud, a flashing cloud, a cloud that looks like the cumulonimbus cloud. That looks like the cumulonimbus cloud. Hallelujah. Because the reason why the enemy has deceived us for far too long is because the enemy knows that we ask for the wrong things from God. His power is not in us. His presence is not in us. We are weak. But that is changing this night. Oh, I said that is changing this night. It is changing. So, how is a rain formed? How do you form a rain? Because you see, if you are going to ask the power and the glory, or if you are going to ask rain to come down, then you must know how this rain is formed. Hallelujah. You must know how this rain is formed. So how, how does the rain form? The geographers will tell you that 
When the sun hits the earth, it hits a river, it hits waters. Now, when it hits it, so the sun hits it this way. Now, when the sun hits it, there is a lifting force. So, when it hits it, the water turns like a vapor. And there is a lifting force. So, a lifting force comes, hits the, the, the vapor, and it forces the vapor to go up. Now, when the vapor goes up, it goes to settle as cloud. And over time, it comes down. So you need three things for a cloud to form. You need a lifting force. You need a moisture. And the second thing is that if you want a cloud, like a cumulonimbus cloud, then you need an unstable air. So you need, the first thing you need is that you need a lifting force, you need a moisture, and you need an unstable air. Now, the, lift, the, the lifting force, if you want to interpret and impose it, or if you want to bring it to the Bible term, the lifting force is the power of the Holy Ghost. So, for you to bring down the power of God, you need the force or the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. For you to produce the rain. And for the rain to come, there must be a vapor. And vapor, in this instance, or air, represent the presence of the Holy Ghost. The presence of the Holy Ghost. So the power of the Holy Ghost, the presence of the Holy Ghost, coming together, they release, the they, they release air into the atmosphere. Hallelujah. And then over time, that glory comes down. Hallelujah. So every one of us, for us to produce the presence and the power, we need the Holy Ghost to work with us. Tell somebody we need the Holy Ghost. Okay, so that is, is that an example of cumulonimbus cloud? You dare not go through this cloud. No, you dare not. No aircraft will fly through this. Hallelujah. No aircraft will fly through this. Now, so go, you go back to my scripture. If you can give him back my scripture. So the Bible says, God will give you rain. You give a brighter clouds and rain. All right? And give them showers of rain to every, to every one grass in the field. Hold it there. So it says, when you go to God and you ask God for rain, it says, God will give to you. But in addition, God will give to every green grass in the field. So green grass here represents the, the, the blessings of God, represents the fruitfulness. So it represents the 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 the, the it's like represent harvest. Hallelujah. So he's saying that when you when you ask of this from God, God will bring in abundance to you. But not only you, that everyone around you must benefit. So in other words, sometimes when he asks for the power and the glory and the presence of God to come down, God comes down mightily and it affects people around you. Even people around you must benefit from it. So he said that, listen, go to God. because, And that is why sometimes somebody is able to pray and sometimes you are not praying, but yet that prayer works in your life. Because when the power comes down, when the glory comes down, when the presence comes down, it affects you. Because there's a relationship. May it affect you. May it impact you. May, 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 may it just find a way of just impacting you even though you have not prayed for it. Everybody around you. And that's why it is good that you pray and intercede for others around you. Because it works. So in conclusion, in conclusion, I told you, the sun 
shines on the water. The water creates or tends, goes through a process and becomes a vapor. The vapor rises to the atmosphere. It forms a cloud and the cloud over time releases upon your life. Those, the, so the sun shines onto the water. The water becomes a vapor. The vapor goes to the atmosphere and then the, the, the vapor be, turns to water and comes upon. So the sun shines. The sun, S-U-N. But can we, trans, can we interchange that with S-O-N and make it the sun, the sun, the sun. So what happens as a Christian, Jesus Christ, the sun, shines his light upon you. When he shines his light upon you, he creates something in you, you are excited, you, 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 you bubble in your spirit, and, 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 and you begin to shake. And when you shake, you release some glory, some blessings to God up there. When you release some blessings and glory to God up there, God sits there and says, okay, now that this person has recognized me and has released some glory to me, God says, well, I have no choice than for me to release my power and my presence to this person. So the sun shines, so you come to Christ. The sun shines its light upon you. There's some glory in you. And you're always telling yourself, oh, I am a child of God. I am born again. I have a father who will never leave me, who will never leave me or forsake me. My God is able. My God, with my God, I can do all things. And the father is sitting there and says, okay, that is my son. That is my boy. Like he told Satan about Job. He said, that is my son. Have you seen my son, my son Job? May God give that testimony about you. May he give that testimony about you. And may the sun shine its light upon you. When it shines its light upon you, may it create something within you. And may that thing cause you to release praises unto God. And may God release his, his rain in terms of blessings upon you. Rise on your feet this night.